So you want to become a minimalist, but you've never done this before and it can be a little overwhelming figuring out where to begin. Do you start by throwing out all of your things? Do you decrease your spending budget to zero dollars? I have those questions too and that is why I'm bringing you five tips for how to start your minimalism journey and making it the easiest transition possible. Welcome back to my channel. Hello if you are new. So glad you could be here for this video. We're going to be getting into the basics of minimalism coming from someone who is still very new to their minimalism journey. I think I've gained a little bit of insight that can help you. And if you are ready to start this path, I'm letting you know, full disclaimer, it's not going to be easy, but it is going to reap a lot of benefits. So I've got five things today to talk about. Make sure you stick around for all five because they're equally important. And without further ado, let's start with number one. The first thing I want you to do is realize that minimalism is a mindset. It really starts in your mind. And I like to think that if you want to change the way that you live, you have to change the way that you think. So by this, I mean that our world is so intensely involved and infatuated with consumerism. Minimalism is not something that's typically promoted. And if you want to live as a minimalist, you kind of have to follow your own rules and go along the basis of what brings your brain peace and what brings your environment peace. Now, minimalism has a ton of benefits for our physical health, our physical environment, but I noticed the biggest change happened mentally. So that's kind of how I knew that it started first with my mindset. And of course, the biggest enemy to this is going to be consumerism and the fact that society just pushes a lot of that on us. We see it in ads, we see it in stores, we see it on social media. It's really hard to get away from but the quicker that you can train your mind to kind of wean off of that mindset that really we've kind of all grown up with if you're in Western society, then the easier a transition into minimalism is going to be for you. So why is that idea of consumerism so addictive in the first place? And that is because it all is meant to appeal to our need for dopamine. And when you think about it, whenever you make a desired purchase, you get a feel good hormone that comes after. It just does something to your brain. I kind of think of it as a bit of a high, you know, shopping addiction is a real thing. Not that everyone has a shopping addiction, but there is a lot of studies to back up how our brain feels and advertisements and marketing really know how to play on that to get you to buy more. Now, I'm not saying that dopamine is inherently bad or our brains getting dopamine is bad. Feeling happy, of course, that's a really good thing, but it's when it becomes a reliance and you form a dependency on doing this task in order to get that dopamine that it becomes sort of like a toxic ritual and can be really hard to get out of. And that is gonna be an enemy to us making transition into living a more minimal and waste-free lifestyle. So if you want to start living more minimally, you're going to have to learn to control those impulses to just buy, buy, buy. And that doesn't necessarily mean spending less money because I'm a bargainer. I love the thrift store. If I can get a good deal on something, I'll totally take advantage of it. But I have noticed that it's still possible to go into a thrift store, only spend $20 and still come out with 10 items that you really didn't need. The best way to train your brain to get off of that dopamine reliance that comes from excessive consumerism is to simply practice not buying anything. So for me, this meant going into my favorite stores, allowing myself to look around and, you know, do my usual thing and then know that in the end, I'm going to walk out of this store without anything. Now, this is different if you're going into a grocery store, obviously you need something, um, but this is meant for those people like me who just enjoy looking at things. And of course, if you go into a store that you really love just to look, chances are you're gonna come out with something that you didn't intentionally wanna buy. Um, but it's there, it's available, so it's very tempting. But what I found is that the more times that I did this, and even this can be in like leaving your wallet at home or whatever, like 
whatever you have to do is that your brain is making the connection that I do not need to come out of the store with something in order to be content, in order to still be okay. I'm okay without that dopamine release and it might take a couple times to get used to it, but now I can say that I can successfully just enjoy shopping around town in the stores that I like and not going into every single one and having that need to buy something. Because at the end of the day, you don't need as much as your brain thinks it needs because more than it wants stuff, it wants dopamine. And 99% of the time, I didn't even think about that stuff that I thought about buying or I didn't even miss the stuff that I saw that I liked. And I realized that I can appreciate something and I can like something without needing to have it. And that makes my life honestly a lot more intentional and a lot more full of things that just bring me joy and it has more of a focus on fullness of joy rather than greed and materialism, if you know what I'm saying. Lastly, along with this point, I wanted to mention a Bible verse that really helped me when I meditated on it to shift my mindset from a focus of overconsumption and materialism, and that is 1 Timothy 6, verse 6 to 10. And this is what it says, but godliness with contentment is great gain, for we brought nothing into the world and we cannot take anything out of the world. But if we have food and clothing with these, we will be content. So let that sit with you for a minute. Think about what it means. I really struggled at first because it was so tempting for me to just give into materialism and give into what I wanted or thought that I needed. And every time that I wanted to spend extra money or get things that I really didn't need, I would think of this verse and pray, Lord, help me be content with what you've already given me. Help me look at what you've already done to meet my needs and to fill me up uh, with relationship with you and of course with the blessings that you've given me. So now that you've got the right mindset, we're gonna move on to our next step, which is a little more fun, a little more hands-on, and that is to just start decluttering. Just start decluttering, just go for it. You don't need a special method. If you really feel like you want to go the Marie Kondo route or you know, follow some other kind of tutorial, you can, that's up to you. But what this stage requires the most from you is 100% honesty. My advice would be to start with the areas of your life that you are the most interactive with. Um, don't look at everything all at once because it's going to be really overwhelming and you're not going to want to go through 10 years worth of clutter that has been piling up in your garage all at once. Just start with the areas that you're familiar with that will cause an immediate impact positively on you once you've decluttered. So this could be your closet, this could be your car. If you work from home, maybe it's your office, your kid's room. Um, just start with those areas that you interact with on a daily basis and you'll start to feel the relief slowly come on and then that'll motivate you to get to those bigger areas where you know it's just gonna take hours to go through all of that extra stuff that we've collected over the years. I wrote down some questions that I would suggest you ask yourself as you're going through this stage of decluttering and I would say number one, asking yourself, would you purchase this again right now? And maybe even ask how much because that price value can change, the value of that item changes based on how much you use it. And then number two, how much have I used or thought about this item since I got it? Number three, if this item in my house was lost right now, would I even notice or bother to go looking for it? And then number four, would this potentially benefit someone else more than it is benefiting me currently? These are questions that you really have to be 100% honest with yourself on. And I know it can be tricky when things have sentimental value. Um, I have an easier time letting go of sentimental things, but I just choose to collect memories in a different way. It might require some sacrifice, uh, but it's gonna be worth it in the end. And I did wanna touch quickly on uh, that last question. When you're going through your stuff in your home and getting rid of things, keep in mind that it could potentially benefit someone more than it's benefiting you. And that's why I asked that last question. The Bible says in Luke 3.10, uh, John the Baptist, when he's um, answering some people's questions on how they are to live their life, he says to one, he who has two tunics, let him give to him who has none. 
Uh, so you can take that as extreme as you want, but I was convicted by this verse and really just reminded me not to just throw everything out. Um, this isn't me saying that you should just throw your drunk on people either, but if something is in good condition, maybe consider donating it to a thrift store. Um, consider asking your community, maybe your church has a need for something like this. Uh, maybe someone in your family or a friend uh, needs something that you are done with and it won't be benefiting you, but it might benefit them. And it's just good to remember that we can easily collect a lot of stuff for ourselves. We can hoard it thinking, oh, you know, I have 20 pairs of shoes, half of them I don't wear because what if it's this one occasion where I just, I, I'm missing a type of shoe or, you know, I used to have a plethora of water bottles, like at least 10 different water bottles. And to think that there's actually a possibility out there of someone having none of this item is just wild and really puts it into perspective that we don't need as much as we think we do. So as you go through your decluttering process, just remember to not throw everything out. If it's in good condition, consider recycling it, consider donating it, giving it to a friend or family member, or even selling it at a really affordable price. But that's just my conviction. I'll leave that with you. Step number three, after you've gone through the decluttering process, um, it's gonna be really tempting now that you have a lot less to go out and buy more, to go and replace everything. Just being honest with you, it's most likely gonna feel a little bit strange having less in your house. Even though it will feel really good, you might feel that tendency start to come back of going out and buying more things you have more space for it. Um, give yourself time to get used to having nothing. I don't mean to sound extreme when I say having nothing. I really just mean having significantly less than you did before. Um, but I'll share with you how I realized that I actually wanted to be a minimalist and that was because my husband and I, when we first got married, we decided to move two provinces over here in Canada. We just took our Honda Civic at this point because it would be way cheaper than hiring a U-Haul at the time that gas prices were really high. So eventually we realized that we couldn't fit everything that we owned in our Honda. So um, we left behind things like furniture, things that we kind of collected over the years that you know we expected to take with us, but we had to really be honest with ourselves at the end of the day. Oh, are we really gonna use this? Is it really worth it? So once we moved, it took us a really long time to start collecting things and getting our life back to normal in terms of furniture and such. And so we had to live with nothing for a while. There was a few months where I really struggled with that materialism because I just kept looking around at my house and thinking, oh, it's so empty. Oh, we don't have this, we don't have that. I don't have my perfect Pinterest home. And eventually I realized that Hey, I actually kind of like not having a ton of stuff around. I actually feel like I can make peace with this and it made me want to go out of the house more. It made me want to go find fulfillment in other things, not just in what I buy or what I own. And it really did teach me what godliness with contentment meant and realizing that uh, if I have what I need, I don't need what I want all the time. So essentially what I mean in this is give your brain a break, let it adjust, and be honest with yourself about how you feel in this new transition. Um, and that also is, goes to say that there's nothing wrong with treating yourself, there's nothing wrong with getting something that truly brings you joy once in a while, um, but letting go of the excessivity uh, that we're so used to in our modern day culture is gonna just feel really good. It's gonna be a detox for your brain. All right, my fourth step that I have for you is to stop being influenced. Get off social media, get off TikTok, get off Instagram, heck, get off Pinterest, please, and get away from the trend of excessive consumerism. I have fallen guilty of this one, and I feel like most of us have, because it's so out there right now, these trends of, top 10 target finds, top 10 home decor finds, um, or Amazon kitchen must-haves, or the next viral beauty product, whatever it is, it's constantly being shoved in our faces through social media. 
And I'm here to tell you friends that you do not need 15 mascaras because they were all labeled the best by some influencer at some point. Um, you do not need a tiny battery operated vacuum that just is for your desk. You don't need everything that people are saying is the top this or the top that. I'm gonna be honest with you and let you in on a little secret and that is affiliate marketing has taken a huge climb in the past few years, especially over the pandemic when people were at home, people started getting paid for mentioning products, for doing advertisements. And so I would say about half of those videos you see about Amazon this have, Amazon that, uh, those are affiliate and a lot of that is promotional product that person getting paid to try and sell you something and it's meant to catch your eye and your attention for a reason. Now that's not to totally put a uh, negative view over all affiliate marketing. Those people are trying to make an income, good for them, but I want you to be really careful about not falling into the trap of influencers wanting you to buy stuff. Now again, there's a difference between something that genuinely gives you joy and serves a purpose in your home. We all like finding a unique thing that really works for us and our lifestyle, uh, but there's a difference between that and a impulse buy at 1 a.m. because you saw a TikTok on why you need this specific item. Um, I really don't think that anybody cares if you have the latest Dyson Airwrap or if you have 10 different colors of the Stanley. Really, everything nowadays is just a trend and I want to encourage you to get out of that mindset of trends and to think about what you actually care about. And minimalism really is about being intentional and so I want you to know that not every purchase that you make will be intentional, but there is ways that you can make it so that what you bring into your life, what you bring into your home, really serve as a purpose and one way to help you with that is just to get away from all of the ads, stop watching the videos, unfollow who you need to unfollow, and this may be a little bit of a hot take, but I really think it needs to be said. All right, so my last step for you to take into launching your minimalism journey, uh, number five, and that is to start being intentional with your life. I see that minimalism really is more than just having less stuff or producing less waste, but I think when you really boil it down, it is a lifestyle. It's a way of looking at your life and choosing to be more intentional with it. And I think that this principle is to be applied to more than just the physical aspects of our life. Um, it's to be applied to what we do with our time, um, how we conduct our thoughts, and yes, how we spend our money. Um, that's all included in that. But if you want to be a minimalist, I'm gonna say start being intentional in every aspect of your life. No, don't just spend because you have the freedom to spend. Be intentional and clear with yourself about why and what it is you are bringing into your life, into your home. Um, don't just go out to get out, you know, ask yourself why are you feeling cooped up in your home all the time? Why do you feel so unfulfilled? Um, if you're spending hours getting ready in the morning, you know, make sure you're being intentional with how you view yourself. Is that because you view yourself as something to fix or because you actually enjoy how you look, enjoy how you present yourself? All of these questions come down to what are we doing with our life? What are we doing with our time, with our thoughts, uh, with our relationship with God? How are we living out and getting the most value out of our time here on earth? As a Christian, the best way for me to be really intentional with my life is to remember that it is fleeting, that it's not going to last forever, and eternity is in the picture, actually. And Jesus says in Matthew 6, 19-21, Do not store up treasures for yourself on earth, where moth and rust destroy, and where thieves break in and steal. But store up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where moth and rust do not destroy, and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. So that is what I'm going to leave with you guys for this video. I hope you found some things to be helpful for starting your venture into minimalism. Again, I'm fairly new to this lifestyle myself and still learning the ropes and making my own changes, but I just want to say that I'm proud of you for seeking out this way of life and always remember that you can lean on the word of God for your strength and your motivation. Feel free to like this video if you enjoyed it. 
Go check out my Instagram and subscribe to my channel if you want to see new videos from me every Friday. Anyways, thanks for being here. I'll see you in the next one.